bowl shape in comparison to the other glasses and quite sort of, uh, sort of tulip shaped on the top there as well which just allows, keeps the aromas in the glass first of all so it's obviously quite a delicate sort of uh, wine so they funnel the, the aromas quite nicely uh, as you know Secondly, when we talk about the palate, you've got a very sort of narrow aperture. So when you go to drink out of this glass, what you'll find is that your tongue naturally has to form a U-shape, which sort of guides the liquid right down the centre of your tongue. Because this is quite an acidic sort of grape variety, we want the wine to stay away from the parts of the mouth where you'll tend to pick up acidity, which would be at the sides. So by keeping the wine funneled right down the centre, you get those, those same sort of crisp sort of flavours that you, that you are smelling, onto the palate as well. And so that sort of green apple, that gooseberry sort of flavour comes through onto the palate, right down the middle, picks that. Now if you try this same wine, if I get you to try this wine out of this glass, okay, so yeah. totally opposite in terms yeah. of sort of shape and style. Okay, so first on the nose, nothing there. Okay, bigger bowl shape, just means that that, that sort of delicate sort of uh, aromas, no, you can't get it. It's just disappeared, it's gone. There's nothing to hold it into the glass. That's what we want. Say that again. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> okay. It's big New Zealand Chardonnay. Um, obviously, it could be an Australian Chardonnay, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, um, we found this one um, a couple of years ago, and um, we liked it so much, we thought we'd, you know, we could use it again. Um, it's quite a rarity, obviously, you don't find many sort of big sort of uh, kiwi oak chardonnays, so this is a lovely one, but designed for this type of glass. Um, so you get, um, with this type of glass, big enough to allow those, those big aromas you'd expect from a, uh, from a big heavy oak chardonnay to come out uh, with it within this glass. It'll do that, it'll sort of, it's like a sort of a, a, a you put a blob of wine on, on your tongue, and as your mouth comes down, it flattens it and pushes it. <laughs> Basically to coat the whole of your tongue, which is lovely, perfect with this style of wine. And now we've we've swapped and we've put the so Chardonnay in the Riesling glass. In the Riesling glass. What, what you have to do, because it's such a big wine, you put it into a smaller bowl, it's just restricted. You can't, it's, it's, you can't get the aroma sort of coming out of the It's when you um, drink out of this glass, and because it's only going into that sort of one place, the dominant flavour will, will sort of take over your mouth, which in a wine like this will tend to be the oak. So you'll just get much more of the oak coming out and much less of that fruit, that creaminess uh, that you'd expect from a, from a nice big oak chardonnay. Um, it's an Pinot from Oregon, uh, which we quite like. It's a very nice wine. This actual glass was um, originally designed um, in conjunction with the, the Board of Oregon uh, for, for their Pinots. They wanted a glass for their Pinots because they're quite different from, from Pinots from elsewhere. We subsequently found out that this actually it works for, for Pinots from pretty much most of the New World. Um, so we're from New Zealand right across to, to, to Oregon, this glass works very well for that. So what you've got first of all is you've got first of all the, um, the it's quite a delicate on the nose uh, as you know, Pinot is really. So the, the shape of the glass just helps to hold that nose in the glass better. So you get that really nice sort of pungent uh, sort of fresh fruit coming through. So the that's sort of, I get a lot of uh, a lot of cherry on that fresh cherry flavour coming through on, on the nose, which is really quite nice. Then, when you come to um, drink it, um, it's almost the same as with the, uh, the Riesling Dark. What you've got is, um, you, guys point out, you, you can see it almost forms a point. So you carry that, you accentuate that into your mouth, that will go right down the center. But it will hit the tip of your tongue first and foremost, this shape. So the tip of your tongue is where you're sort of picking up um, um, sweetness and fruit. So when you go to drink it, you'll get that some nice fresh fruit feel coming through on the mouth because it's hitting the very front. I'm having difficulty believing this, but the one on the left is a relatively delicate fragrant aroma I'm getting, and on this one I'm getting almost nothing. <laughs> it's, it's just flatter, lifeless. Yeah, yeah. Um, much bigger wine now. Bigger, heavier in, in, in all aspects. Yeah, straight away you're getting that real punch of sort of black current uh, sort of aromas coming out of that. Really, yeah, it's really quite nice. Um, so what we tend to find is it's uh, it's uh, Mondavi Napa. So what we've tended to find over the years is as um, as wines have sort of got bigger, our cabernet glass has had to get bigger. So we uh, big glass. Yeah. How many, how many how many mil would that hold? 
<laughs> it's going to be just about a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fill this up and try and do gum by with it. No. <laughs> gum by with a full bottle of Cabernet in your glass. Yeah, okay. But obviously, the other thing you've got in these wines, well, in terms of the flavour, you've got a lot of tannins in here. It's right to the young, there's a lot of tannins. So by throwing the wine towards the back of the palate a bit more, it's not sort of congregating the front and picking up the tannins, which you do. So it allows the fruit to come out, which, you know, it, it, when you try it in this glass, with that glass being designed to hit the front, you'll pick up the tannins, which will then mask the fruit that you've got to get as well. 